transcribed from Tom Brenneman's own restaurant on Pine Street, the Hollywood and Sunset Boulevard, Kellogg's Pep and Procter and Gamble's Ivory Flakes serve you breakfast in Hollywood. Friends, some men who rise in the world have the drive of a locomotive. Other men have the push of a bulldozer. And here's a man, well, we call him the blimp. It's that guy who'd never rise if it wasn't for all that hot air, Tom Brenneman. Thank you. Thank you, and good morning, ladies. You out there along the network party line, once more we're greeting you from Hollywood in California where the ladies are have gathered for a bite of breakfast in the Brenneman Beanery. That's right, a little breakfast, a little banter, a little back talk, all which makes up breakfast in Hollywood, by golly. We have visitors here from all over the nation here at breakfast this morning and every morning as far as that goes. And you know in our country, people of many re- races and creeds live in harmony learn from one another and together and create a standard of living that is the envy of the world. This is American Brotherhood Week, and brotherhood means a way of life, so let's support it throughout the years. And that makes sense. And now we're going to visit a little bit as we kind of open this ivory flake portion of our broadcast. I don't know where to start this morning. Thank golly they're crowded in this morning. Maybe we'll start with you. Who are you? Well, this is June Hayes of Watson, Missouri. From where? Watson, Missouri. Watson, Missouri. Well, Miss Hayes, we're glad to have you with us. Do you have a new pin here? No, it's not very new. Well, I thought maybe it might be a little downtime present. No. Who are you? Mrs. James Harmon. From? Huntington Park. From Huntington Park. <laughs> and you, sir? George Whitfield, Forest Hills, Pennsylvania. From Forest Hills, Pennsylvania. Yes, sir. Is that close to Pittsburgh? Ten miles from Pittsburgh. Yeah. He gave me a stogie a moment ago. Huh? <laughs> I haven't had a chance to unwrap it. I'm almost afraid to. Huh? His what? Want another one? Yes, why not? Thanks. <laughs> Give him one of our special extra, Johnny. There's a cigar for you. <laughs> you look pretty brutal to me. It's been a long time since I've smoked a Pittsburgh stogie. Hello, who are you? All over them trolls from Philly, Illinois. Mm-hmm. Just facing a bit. Clark Fox, San Francisco. Good. And hello. You are? Chicago, Illinois. Mrs. Miller. What Miller? Louise Miller. Louise Miller from yes. Chicago. Mm-hmm. And you? I'm Zelda Morrison from Canyon, Canyon City, Missouri, and I'm selling one of the many who's celebrating their birthday today. Oh, you're celebrating your birthday? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, I'm afraid you don't have enough birthdays to get much recognition around here. Oh, yes, mm-hmm. I do, mm-hmm. too. How, I many, do. how old are you, then? How old do you think I am? How old do I think? <laughs> <laughs> Honey, you're putting yourself right on the spot. Go right ahead, tell me. Huh? Go ahead. Oh, tell I me. don't know. You're about 30. <laughs> Come on. What is your name? Helen Mueller. Uh, Helen what? Mueller. Where are you from, Miss Mueller? Um, Ventura. She looks younger than you do. <laughs> <laughs> what is your name? Vivian and Coda, formerly of Burlington, Vermont, now of Pasadena. Coda. Coda. Mm-hmm. Coulter. Oh, Coda. Mm-hmm. An unusual name. You put your hair up every night. <laughs> well, do you? Well, I don't know. I may soon have to put mine up. The mantelpiece of the viewer or something. You know, well-groomed hair does a lot for a woman's appearance. But the real test of fine appearance is this. A, a woman who washes her clothes and also the dishes in I preach. The woman who looks neat right down to her fingertips, and I do mean fingertips. For soft, smooth fingers, for prettier, younger-looking hands, one box of flakes is all it takes. And you'd jump to give your lovely clothes an eye reflexing, wouldn't you? Then why hesitate about your hands? They're important, too. And a strong wash day soap for dishes can so easily turn hands into social liabilities. 
even to the color of red ink, you might say. If your hands are in the red because of the wrong soap, don't ditch the dishes. Just switch the soap. Switch to ivory flakes in the dishpan. Ivory flakes, the pure, mild flake form of baby's ivory soap. Flakes are gentle as an admiring glance, honestly. And one box of flakes is all it takes for prettier, younger-looking hands. And don't forget that. Flakes in the dishpan are fast sudsing, too. They leap miraculously into glistening, foamy suds, faster than any other leading wash day soap in the market. Yes, the soap for dishes is ivory flakes. For speed, for suds, for prettier, younger-looking hands, only one box of flakes, that is all it takes. Your ivory flakes. <laughs> oh, wow. It gets worse as the days go along. Now, and get back to you. You say you're having a birthday. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And when we were so rudely interrupted here. That's right. Yeah. What birthday is it? Valentine's Day. Well, what birthday is it? My and my birthday. I'm 49 years old today. You're 49? Right. My golly, you do not look it. Oh, I am. Huh? Stand up and let the folks see you. Does she look 49? No. I'm a grandmother to a 13-year-old granddaughter. You're what? A grandmother. You're a grandmother. Well, don't bring your troubles in here. I'm not. <laughs> Here's a little birthday present for you. Thank you very, very much. That's a pair of ring clear nylons. They're not ordinary nylons. They're ring clear. Can you take care of them too now? That's right, I agree. You bet. Forty-nine years old. Isn't that amazing? Hell, you're nine years older than I am. <laughs> All right, we'll get around to her. What was your name again? Helen Mueller. Helen Mueller? Mm -hmm. And who are you? Mrs. Tom Hammer. From? Long Beach. Yes, yeah, you. Mrs. Mildred Kuykendall, Long Beach. What is it? Long Beach. Your name Kuykendall. is? Kuykendall. <laughs> Kuykendall. No, Kuykendall. Kuykendall, right. Kuykendall. Well, I don't know. There's three hats here, and they're all very <laughs> silly looking. I think I'll take your hat. <laughs> How can we miss on that? What is your name? Uh, Mrs. Klein, Henry Klein from Beulah, Colorado. Oh, hello, Miss Henry Klein. Who are you? Nellie Butters from Fort Worth, Texas. Well, good. We're happy to have you. My goodness. This was the one that said that, uh, I said a moment ago that, Mrs., what was your name again? You look younger. What's the trouble there? She's got it, uh, <laughs> she had it pinned on with a comb. Brand new, too. <laughs> Look, there's no top in it. Mean. <laughs> you know, that's a nice looking hat. And uh, it's kind of a, uh, what do you call them? Uh, a little coronet with roses. And it's, 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 it's a very attractive hat. <laughs> you see it on me. <laughs> 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 there you are. Is that your daughter? Is that your daughter? Well, I wouldn't brag about it. Are you Henry Klein? Henry Klein. Well, you're, 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 you're very proud that she's our daughter. You are? We're very proud that she's our daughter. Yeah, she she has to doll herself up in that way. Mrs. Denny, honey, if you'll stop on your way out, we'll see that you get one of the Tom, new Tom Brenneman models. <laughs> they really don't like those two. They're really fine hats that we are having in the market. You, you want to see one? Well, you go over there. There's uh, 12 of them, 12 new models out there, made by the leading hat designers in the country. We're happy to see that you get one. How many how many children did you have, Mr. Henry Klein, and your Mrs. Klein? Right? Three. Huh? Three. Three. And Mrs. Klein. Well, she helped, yes. yes. 
Incidentally, our movie breakfast in Hollywood opens today at Ashton, Nebraska, in the new Ashton Theater. And they're also having a big breakfast in Hollywood wing ding on the stage right now. Let's send them a cheer from the Hollywood home base. Have a good time back there, Mr. Tom Ashton. I know a great many of you spotted him. I'm just going to take the liberty of introducing him to you here in the restaurant and you out there along the network. Uh, so many of you have seen him. He's been in so many pictures. But, of course, he is famous for the, for Papa Dion. Uh, the, come on, Johnny Quaylen. I want you to meet him. You know him. Hi, John. I haven't, seen, I haven't seen you in a long time. No, I you remember, remember him now, don't you? Johnny, uh, uh, Johnny that, uh, that role of... Now, uh, you behave, please. That role of Papa Dion has just about ruined your career, didn't it? Yeah, it did. It huh? did me a little harm for a while. Mm -hmm. I was in a very serious picture, and uh, after they'd seen The Father of the Quince, and they saw this very serious part, mm -hmm. uh, immediately I came on the screen, and they started to laugh. Mm -hmm. And uh, that word got around. It took me about two years to get out of that. <laughs> and... Uh, John Ford gave me a chance uh, to play a very serious part in The Grapes of Wrath, the mm -hmm. part of Muley, mm -hmm. which was a wonderful part, and uh, that helped me to get uh, out of that. Again. So I've been coasting along fairly well from then on. Oh, you've been busy. How many pictures have you made, Johnny? About 86. About so 86 far. pictures. <clears throat> yes, sir. Well, that's quite a record. Seems as though you've been in pictures longer than I've been in radio. Well, sometimes I feel a little bit old. Too. <laughs> Say, by the way, if, if if Uncle Corny ever gets sick, will you let me play his part? <laughs> no, he'd be all right, too. <laughs> I'll let him meet Uncle Corny when he comes in, Johnny. <laughs> Tell me, Johnny, this. Um, what are you doing now? Oh, I just finished a picture uh, called The Fugitive, uh, which John Ford is directing. We made it in Mexico City, by the mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. They have some wonderful studios down there. Mm -hmm. uh, Tell me, like a big didn't deal. I read something in the, in the trades that you went to a bullfight or something yeah. down there? And got yeah, away? I was in that big excitement down yeah, there. Well, when what? the audience really went wild. Mm -hmm. It was... It was tremendous. The bulls weren't very good, the audience claimed. I didn't know the difference. It seemed like they were good bulls to me. <laughs> well, what happened? Well, <clears throat> Garth uh, claimed that uh, the wind was blowing too strong. And, of course, if the wind blows, the muleta, which is that red cape, mm -hmm. uh, over toward him, well, the bull is going to go for the center of that red cape, and he's liable to get killed. Mm -hmm. So uh, he didn't seem to care much about fighting, and the audience... Uh, uh, started yelling at him and throwing pillow cushions and uh, first thing you know uh, the police were taking care of Garza and someone who he, with whom he was having an argument and uh, the whole crowd got it the, you know what mob psychology yes, yes, is uh -huh. it kept growing and growing they started fires up in the top of the, of the grandstand they threw pillows all over the I the saw ring. pictures I believe it was in life yeah there, there were two pages of it <clears throat> who was with you the time? Uh, Mr. and Ms. Henry Fonda, Ward Bond, and uh, John Ford, the director. I bet you got out of there in a jiffy. And uh, J. Carroll Nash. Mm -hmm. No, no, I stayed. I wanted... That was more excitement than the bullfight. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's interesting. It was wild. <laughs> well, thanks, Johnny hey. Quentin, for coming over and saying hello. You're welcome. It. Thank and you. I'll have you meet Uncle Corny the minute he comes in. <laughs> Oh, my. Well, we're going to award her. What is it? It's a lady from what? Hooray! Oh, you know Johnny Quaylen? Oh, do you? <laughs> well, that's right. What is your name? You know him, Johnny? Ms. E.W. knows? Never heard of her. No, I didn't think of her. <laughs> Who are you? Mrs. Quayle. All right, Miss Quayle, you draw a number out of there, please. We'll award our wishing ring here in a jiffy like. It's one seven one five. 
1715. When's our wishing ring? <laughs> we'll do. Remember, the shortage of fats and oils is serious, ladies. We need the help of every housewife, everybody, every day, save every drop of used fat. And that will about conclude the first portion of Breakfast in Hollywood, brought to you by Procter & Gamble's Ivory Flakes. This next 15 minutes brings you greetings from the grand old Kellogg Company of Battle Creek, Michigan. Kellogg, makers of pep and good. And good morning. Good morning. And who are you? I'm Ruth Gleberman from Long Beach. Hello, Miss Gleberman. How do you do? Mrs., isn't it? Mrs., yes. Mrs. Uh -huh. We have a number of folks in here from Long Beach this morning. They ran a bus up here, I believe. Yes, they did. Were you on that bus? Yes, I was. Mm -hmm. Did you have a, a nice trip? Very nice, right. indeed. Uh, how was the weather down your way when you left? Very foggy. It was foggy. Mm -hmm. well, we're happy to say it's beautiful here. Yes, it is. There's funny. your wishing ring. Isn't that beautiful? Right? We think so, and I want to put it on your finger, Mrs. Uh... Thank you. Well, it's all right. <laughs> So I'm shaking with you. I mean, we... now then, you have a wish. Yes, I have. Mm -hmm. And what is it? Well, I knew I was too young to get the orchid, but I did wish I'd get a kiss from Tom Brenneman. <laughs> happen around here. Oh, dear. You also have a cigar, too, Mr. <laughs> oh, never mind. Here's our good neighbor letters. Uncle Corny, come in, Bobby. All right. It comes from Wichita, Kansas, this morning. It says, Dear Tom, for many years, Mrs. George Massey of Wichita, Kansas, has been supplying complete layups to mothers who otherwise would not have clothes for their newborn babies. These layouts are made and assembled as beautifully as could any possibly be done. And they have been given to Indian mothers and mothers of Salvation Army rescue homes and sent to Africa and Holland and other countries and given to many in her home community. The letters of appreciation which come to her are her only award for the effort she makes. And we think she justly deserves the honor of being one of your good, good neighbors. Her husband has for many years supervised the transportation every Sunday morning of the children from the Wichita Children's Home as they may attend Sunday school. So they may attend Sunday school. This fine couple celebrated their golden wedding anniversary on December the 31st, and we think they deserve to be considered as your good, good neighbors. Mr. and Mrs. L.L. L. Wilson and Mr. and Mrs. Harry G. Hull of Wichita, Kansas, 223 North Fountain Avenue. Uncle Corny sent this orchid early because we had word from radio station KFBI in Wichita, that Mrs. Massey is to be their guest today on a special program to be heard over uh, KFBI, at which time they'll pin the orchid on her for the ladies of breakfast in Hollywood. And so this morning, we are making Mrs. George Massey of 231 South Volusia Street in Wichita, Kansas, our good, good neighbor of the day. Come on, Paul. Good morning, Corny. How are you this morning? Well, I'm pretty good today. Oh, you look good. Yes, I feel fine. <laughs> Tell me, where'd you get all bruised up like that? Eh? I said, where'd you get all those bruises? I hope you have a good excuse for that black eye. Oh, no, I ain't. If I'd had a good excuse, my wife wouldn't have given it to me. <laughs> I see. You and your troubles with your wife... Why don't you and your wife try to understand each other, Corny? Why don't you try to get along as well as well as you did when you were first married? Well, yes, sir, 52 years ago when I married her. Oh, Williford was a nice girl. Yeah. I'll never forget how nervous I was before that wedding. You were? Yeah. There was something I had to get off my chest. Something you had to get off your chest. Yeah, a tattooed heart with the name Agnes on it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you got a joke this morning? 
I said, you have a little joke for us this morning? Oh, yes. No, I ain't. You have no joke? No, I got a fashion note, though. You've got a fashion note? Yes, I got a fashion note. All right, let's have it. Well, some women's clothes are going to be radically different this year. And on account of that, there's going to be very little change in the men's clothes. There's going to be very little change in the men's clothes. Yeah, especially in the pants party. <laughs> well, Corny, I know that you've already taken care of the orchid, but I do want you to say hello to Johnny Quail, and you've seen him in movies. Come on over here. Well, Sam, hello, Corny. How are you? Say, who's the corniest here? Is here with you? <laughs> Well, my grandpa and grandma told me I sound an awful lot like corny. In fact, they tell me I am corny. <laughs> well, so am I, brother. <laughs> Good luck, Corny. Get out of here. The Kellogg Company has asked me to tell you again today about the offer they're making so that you can get the Breakfast in Hollywood phonograph records. Now, these records are the highlights from actual Breakfast in Hollywood broadcasts. Spots which were taken off the air just as they really happened right here. Some of them happened a long time ago, some of them more recently. So who knows, if you or your friends have ever been to Breakfast in Hollywood broadcasts, perhaps you're on these records, I don't know. But they make a swell permanent souvenir of the show. Something you can play at home, or something you can carry along to take to, to a party sort of carry our party to yours and let your friends hear some of the unexpected things that happen here from time to time. And that's why I get such a kick out of this program. I never know who, from where, and I'm going to say what. But the best of these happenings are waiting for you on these phonograph records, which you just play on your ordinary phonograph, which the grand old Kellogg Company is making it possible for you to get. Now, here's the story on that. There are two 10-inch records which play on both sides. About 15 minutes of real fun. They're exactly the same as you get in the record stores, but they won't cost half as much. Now, here's how you get these two records with four sides of listening. Good listening. Just mail one box top from swell-tasting Kellogg's Pep and a dollar bill, or a money order or a check for one dollar, to me, Tom Brenneman, Hollywood, California. That's all the address you need. And that's a real deal, folks. Two of these amusing Breakfast in Hollywood records were less than the cost of one. Here's that information once more. Send one box top from Pep, the Sunshine Cereal, and a $1 bill or a check or a money order for $1 to me, Tom Brenneman, Hollywood, California. And your two Breakfast in Hollywood records will quickly be on their way to you. Now, this offer is very limited, so get your order in today. I really am very proud of those records, not because I'm on them, but because of the the uh, very interesting personalities. The, well, they have, the, of course, the eldest guest spots in the wishing ring and some pretty hilarious things there. But right now it's orchid time, so we're going to award our lovely California Armroy orchid to our eldest guest. Who is the eldest lady this morning? 75. There's a 75. 84. There's an 84. And will that win? And so it will on her 84th birthday. Isn't that nice? <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll talk real loud. Come on out here if they'll let you. <laughs> What's your name? Myra Ryan. 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 Myra Ryan. Yes. Where do you live, Miss Ryan? In uh, Detroit. Oh, come on. It's quite me today. Thank you. Myra Ryan from Detroit. She's 84 today. Now then, meet the ladies of Breakfast in Hollywood. <laughs> yes. Myra, were you born in Detroit? No, sir. I was born in the state of New York. New York State. But I've lived in Michigan for uh, a good many years. Oh, oh. Since I was 19. <laughs> since you were 19? Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. I've lived in Detroit for over 20 years. Oh, my goodness. You must have a wide circle of friends back there, eh? Oh, yes, I have. Yes. Yeah. Are you enjoying California? I certainly am. Yeah. <laughs> we were back in Detroit last February. Yes. When, or March. 
Last March or February. Last February. No, it was March. Oh, yeah, a lot of part of February. It was February. It was March. When were we in Detroit? When where? That's what I said. We were there in February. And it was awfully cold back there at the time. It is. It's very yeah. cold now. I understand they're having some cold weather back there yes, now. But we I enjoyed our stay very much. Yes. Mm -hmm. I hear from my daughters in, in Detroit, and they say it's very, very cold and stormy. <laughs> How many children did you have, Ms. Ryan? Seven. Seven. A big family. You must have a lot of grandchildren. I have. I have about uh, 13 grandchildren and 14 great-grandchildren. Oh, my. That's a grand family. <laughs> Well, tell me this now, Mrs. Uh, how long have you been in California? Uh, about three weeks. You're visiting some of your relatives here? Yes, I have two daughters here that I'm visiting. Oh, yes. One in, uh, in uh, uh, Ontario uh -huh. and one in Tucson. In, uh, Tucson, Arizona? Arizona. Oh. But she's here today. So. She's here for your birthday? Yes, for my birthday. Well, grand. Myra, isn't it? Myra. Yeah. Oh, IRA. Well, we're going to sing happy birthday to you in a minute, Mrs. Thank Ryan. You. We certainly are. Have you any plans for your birthday celebration? Yes, I what are your plans? You're going to have a party? Uh, well, no. Uh, my uh, party was coming out here in Hollywood. <laughs> oh. That was celebration enough, I thought. Is this the only party they're giving you? Yes. You cheap guy. <laughs> Well, look, how would you like to come down and have a birthday lunch with me? I'll bake you a cake. Uh, no, I won't bake you a cake, but I mean, we'll have the chef. He'll bake you a little yeah, birthday all right, cake. Thank Could you, you come down for lunch? I would. Well, that's nice. Come down and have a birthday lunch. All right. Will you let me cut the cake? Certainly, I will. All right, you get here about, um, we'll say about 12.30. All right. I'll look for you now. All right. All right. Uh, now, let's sing happy birthday, dear Myra. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Myra. Happy birthday to you. There's your birthday flower. Well, thank you. That's your birthday orchid. All right. Thank uh -huh. you. And also because you're the eldest guest, 84. Is that so? Yes. Yeah. Right. Now you... If I am if I talking too loud up there, she's pretty hard of hearing. You're hearing me now, aren't you? Oh yes, I hear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. You wear a hearing device, do you, Miss Ryan? Uh, well, I tried it once, but it didn't help me, and so mm -hmm. I discarded it entirely. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yes. Well, you're listening pretty well. You hear the radio? Do you hear well enough to hear the radio in the morning? Oh no, not very well. I have turned up pretty high. Yes. I just wondered if you ever heard our program before. Oh, I have listened to it, because yeah. I have daughters that uh, have it, you know, and when I'm there, I, I make it my home with my woman. Well, have you ever had an orchid before? No, I never did. No. <laughs> well, you know what happens when we give the lady her first orchid? Well... Do you know? No, I don't. Are you sure? What I've heard. Oh, what you've heard. <laughs> Somebody done told you. <laughs> we get a little kid. <laughs> Happy birthday, Myra Ryan. And look where it's me. Don't go. Don't go. Bye. Thanks, Johnny. Incidentally, we're sending an orchid too to Miss Henrietta Lord, a batog. Bogota, New, New Jersey, who's celebrating her 100th birthday today. But now we're going to have to break it up. She and I hate to. We have so many things to give away here. Say, Johnny, Johnny Quaylen, you might take a little... Uh, this is Johnny Quaylen. There's a little Kellogg variety pack. That's your fee for your appearance <laughs> with Uncle Corny. Uh, we have the Dewberry Beauty Kit to award, and we have some other flowers, some Cedric's roses and other things, but right now we're going to have to break it up pretty fast, like... Come on, we'll do that after we leave the network. And that ends our Hollywood break. We had a most wonderful time. Just to add once more, in this Brotherhood Week, it's well to emphasize the good world of the future. Let us live, believe, and support Brotherhood throughout the year, won't we? That will do it for today. Good luck to our nation and to Americans all over the world, wherever you may be listening. Till tomorrow, then. I'll...
Tom Brenneman's Breakfast in Hollywood is brought to you transcribed at the same time every day, Monday through Friday, by Kellogg's Pep and Procter & Gamble's Ivory Flakes. On a shivery morning when the clear, sharp air calls for breakfast quick, lady, that's crumbled weather. That's when you want a toasty kind of cereal with zip and go. That's when you think of toasty words like crisp, crunchy, crinkly. Crumbles? Kellogg's crumbles? The only cereal made from those little crinkly shreds of good whole wheat. Sort of sweet and mellow rich and so good for the family. You know that. So when you think of something toasty on a cold morning... Think of crumbles. Kellogg's crumbles. That. So when you think of something toasty on a cold morning, think of crumbles. Kellogg's crumbles.